first of all we'll take the quick review of thermodynamics we have here q is equal to delta u plus w that is normally used normally used for non steady flow process that is non flow process delta u is equal to m into cv into delta t for flow energy equation we have q dot plus m dot into h1 plus half v1 square plus g z1 equals to w dot plus m dot into h2 plus half v2 square into g z2 this is normally used for all steady flow devices like compressors condenser heat exchanger turbine compressor like this the symbols are to be used very carefully in the case of thermodynamics we are using a symbol equal to q dot this is derivative of q with respect to time it is normally given by m dot multiplied by q m dot is kg per second this one is dot means kilojoule per second it means that the lower case q represents the specific quantity that is kilojoules per kg if you have got q dot you use the rate term small q you can use the specific capital q you can use for total Similarly, for W dot, we can write it as M dot multiplied by specific word, specific word W. So, total work is given by M multiplied by W. So, follow this notation, your subject will become more simple. In our analysis, we will neglect the changes in uh, velocity and the potential energy. So, they are very negligible quantity in case of steady flow devices. As far as the compressor and the condenser and evaporator is considered so we left with q dot plus m dot h i equal to w dot plus m dot into h e i for inlet and e for exit and if you divide this quantity by m dot you will get q plus h i equal to w plus h e so this quantity is a specific quantity each term has unit of kilojoules per kg and this one is the rate quantity is kilowatts so condenser we have four components one is evaporator one is compressor condenser and one is expansion wall cycle is working anti-clockwise this is point number one at the entry to the compressor exit is two entry to the expansion wall is three and entry to the evaporator is four now the evaporator is normally passed to the cold space so heat is taken from the cold press at temperature equal to tl the condenser is maintained at temperature th normally entry to the condenser is maintained at dry saturated and uh, at point number three that is inlet to the expansion wall we have to make the saturate liquid it is better to prefer the ph diagram and in ph diagram we have critical point here this line this region is called as liquid plus vapor the compressor is normally setting the pressure of upper lower pressure and higher pressure so p1 is the low pressure and p2 is the high pressure Starting point is 1 is dry and saturated and point number 3 is on high pressure is saturated liquid. So these are the two standard points you can look at the graph. Point number uh, 1 to 2 is the isentropic process. So from 1 you can look at the isentropic process. So point number 2 represents the superheated point. During this process entropy have to keep constant. The temperature T2 is more than the temperature of the condenser. 2 to 3 is the constant pressure cooling process that takes place with the condenser and 3 to 4 is the throttling process throttling process is normally irreversible process therefore we will show this by dotted line this one is a vertical line because your x-axis is enthalpy axis so enthalpy at point number 3 is always equals to enthalpy at point number 4 and 4 to 1 is the constant pressure heat removal process so refrigerating effect is taking place about point number 1 and condenser the work required to compressor is 2 minus 1 so two process are constant pressure, one process is entropy and one process is isoenthalpic. This one is called as vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Temperature lines are go like this. This one is represent high temperature of condenser. This one represents the low temperature that is the evaporate temperature. The temperature at point number two is higher than the condenser temperature. If your point will lie on the right hand side that is the vapor line it will be called as Hg and every time you have to take the property on the temperature which is inside the dome that is at point number one enthalpy point number one hg will be at temperature te for point number three is lying on saturated liquid line so is hf at the condenser temperature h3 is same as h4 but h3 is given from the equation of one and hf and hg at point temperature te so this is hf plus x4 multiplied by hfg at temperature te point number two you have to calculate using the superheat tables at point number two we have the enthalpy equal to hg it should be h2 is equal to hg plus cp soup 
into T2 minus TSH. TSH is taken as the dome temperature that is TC. So in this fashion we can calculate all enthalpy. Now you can analyze these much components using the first law neglecting changes in kinetic energy and potential energy. So one by one we will discuss these components. So let's start with evaporator. Evaporator entry is 4. Exit is via Q41 equal to H4. No work done in the heat exchanger. So Q41 is H1 minus H4. H1 is more than H4. So this is the positive quantity. Positive means heat is absorbed. Heat rejected is taken as negative and heat absorbed is taken as positive. Opposite sign for work done. So this one is called as RE or called as cooling effect. Then we have second process 122. 122 is entry is Q12 plus H1 plus W12 plus H2. But 122 is isentropic process. So Q12 is 0. So we have W12 equal to H1 minus H2. But H1 is less than H2. So this quantity is negative quantity. It means that the work is supplied. So work supplied for the compressor is H2 minus H1. Right? Every answer positive. Q23 is the condenser process. Q23 plus H2 equal to W23 plus H3. The heat exchanger has no moving parts. So W23 will be equal to 0. And we get Q23. Q23 is H3 minus H2. H3 is less than H2. So this one is negative quantity. It means that heat is rejected. This is called as heating effect. So COP of evator is taken as RE divided by W of compressor and COP of heat pump is taken as heating effect divided by work of compressor. It is already known that the COP of heat pump is than COP of evator by 1. Now if you multiply by M dot you will get capacity called as RC. RC is called as refrigeration capacity is m dot into re is m dot into h1 minus h4 m dot into h4 is in kilowatt one ton of refrigeration is equal to 3.52 kilowatts so this is useful conversion to find out mass flow rate if you are given the capacity in terms of tons of refrigeration w dot is simply given by m dot multiplied by w w is h2 minus h1 is also always in kilowatts never write this answer in tons of refrigeration if you take a ratio of RC divided by W, you will get the same answer as of COP. Similarly, we can calculate heating capacity as M dot multiplied by heating effect. Condenser, you want to take condenser, the 2 is higher always than 3. So, H2 minus H3. While writing the formula, you always select higher minus lower value. So, there is no change in formula. You can write RC by W dot or you can write for COP of heat pump as SC divided by W dot. Your M dot will get cancelled. Suppose sometimes they will ask you what is the dryness fraction at point number 4. So in that case, we know H3 is equal to H4. So we can replace this value. So H3 you can find out at the condenser temperature that equal to HF. And H4 you can write as HF plus X4 HFG at evaporator temperature. HFG can be written as HG minus HF.